Have you ever felt an inexplicable heaviness when around certain people, perhaps a sense of being drained or a sudden dip in your mood after spending time with them? This phenomenon is often attributed to what many spiritual practitioners refer to as low vibrational people. But what do these vibrations even mean? And why do they have such a deep impact on our lives? Let's explore the dark realities of low vibrational people and how their presence can ruin our lives if we're not careful when around the M high versus low vibrations in the world of spirituality. Everything is composed of energy vibrating at different frequencies. High vibrational energy is associated with positive emotions, love, joy, and peace. On the other hand, low vibrational energy aligns with negativity, fear, anger, and sadness. These vibrations are not just abstract concepts. They are strong forces that affect our well-being and our environment. Ancient wisdom and modern science both support the idea that we are deeply influenced by the energies around us. Quantum physics, for instance, has she. Own that everything in the universe is interconnected through a Web of energy, this aligns with Eastern philosophies like Taoism and Buddhism, which teach that our inner states reflect and influence the outer world. In these traditions, maintaining a high vibration is crucial for achieving harmony and balance. But what most people don't know is that low vibrations can completely shatter your peace of mind if you don't protect yourself from them, more specifically from low vibrational people. One of the lesser-known truths about low vibrational people is that their energy can be contagious, just as a smile can brighten a room. A negative attitude can cast a shadow. This is why it's so important to be mindful of the company we keep when we surround ourselves with people who consistently emit low vibrations. It can pull us down, making it harder to maintain our own high frequency. State Vibrational Resonance Another important concept to consider is that of resonance in physics. Resonance occurs when two systems vibrate at the same frequency, amplifying each other's energy spiritually. This means that if we are not vigilant, the low vibrations of others can start to resonate with any latent negativity within us amplifying it. This can lead to a cycle where our own vibrations begin to lower creating a fertile ground for negativity to flourish. The resonance of vibrations is so essential to humanity that it even affects us at a collective level. Just take a look at the historical event of the Renaissance in Europe. The Arnaissance serves as an example of how periods of great challenge and low vibrations can lead to extraordinary growth and enlightenment. After the Dark Ages, the Renaissance. Ants brought a renewed interest in art science and spirituality, leading to a profound cultural and intellectual awakening. But these theories have been studied since way before the Renaissance. Ancient philosophers like Plato and Aristotle recognized the impact of our environmental energy on our inner states. Plato, in his Theory of Forms, suggested that the world we perceive with our senses is a reflection of a higher, more perfect reality. This implies that the vibrations we encounter daily shape our perception and consequently our reality. Aristotle, on the other, hand emphasized the importance of cultivating virtues and avoiding vices as these directly influence our state of being. This means that successfully interacting with low vibrational people often requires us to confront our own shadows. Carl Jung, a pioneering psychologist, introduced the concept of the shadow self, the parts of ourselves that we deny or repress, encountering low vibrational energy, can trigger these hidden aspects, bringing them to the surface. This can be uncomfortable, but it also provides an opportunity for growth and healing by facing T.E. Hazy aspects P.S. of ourselves, we can integrate them and transform our energy. But there's also a spiritual lesson in dealing with low vibrational people, one most people forget exists. Many spiritual traditions teach that every encounter is an opportunity for learning and growth. The Buddha, for instance, taught that difficult people can be our greatest teachers as they challenge us to practice compassion, patience, and non-attachment. But by viewing these interactions as opportunities for spiritual practice, we can transform negative experiences into stepping. Stones on our path to enlightenment, however, it's still crucial 
that you learn how to protect yourself from low vibrational energy. One secret that not even experienced spiritualists know. How do you protect yourself? The most practical way is through mindfulness and meditation. By reg lie centering ourselves and raising our own vibrations, we can create a buffer against negative influences. Visualization techniques, such as imagining a protective light surrounding us, can also be effective. These practices help maintain our energy field and keep our vibi, rations high even in the presence of low vibrational people. It's also important to practice self-care and establish healthy boundaries. This might mean limiting time with some people or seeking out high vibrational environments that uplift and support us surrounding ourselves with positive influences. Whether they are people, places, or activities can significantly enhance our ability to stay balanced and centered. Remember the key to navigating this complex energetic landscape lies in maintaining our own high vibration, practicing compassion, and embracing Eve. Rye experience as an opportunity for growth, but it's impossible to avoid low vibrational people forever. What if, for example, a close relative had low vibrations? Does that mean you have to cut them off from your life for good? If a family member has low vibrations, unlike friends or acquaintances whom we can choose to avoid family members, are often a significant part of our lives, making it necessary to find ways to manage these relationships without compromising our own well-being. But similar princip principles apply in these situations. Understand they, to everyone is on their own journey and low vibrational behavior, often stems from unresolved pain, trauma, or fear. By approaching these individuals with compassion, you can transform your interactions. This doesn't mean you have to absorb their negativity, but rather you acknowledge their struggles without letting it affect your energy. Buddha taught that compassion is a powerful tool for spiritual growth, allowing us to connect with others on a deeper level and heal through understanding an often neglected tactic when dealing with this is clearly and assertively co-communicating boundaries. For example, if a family member tends to engage in negative talk, you can gently steer the conversation towards more positive topics or excuse yourself from the conversation when it becomes overwhelming. Setting these boundaries is an act of self-care and self-respect. Engaging in open and honest communication can sometimes help in resolving underlying issues, approach conversations with a loving and non-judgmental attitude, expressing how certain behaviors affect you and suggesting more positive ways to interact. This can so, me times lead to a mutual understanding and shift in Dynamics, however, it's important to remember that not everyone is open to change and that's okay. Another powerful tool is forgiveness. Holding on to resentment or anger towards low vibrational people can lower your own vibration. Practicing forgiveness doesn't mean condoning negative behavior, but rather releasing the emotional hold it has on you. This liberates your energy and allows you to move forward with a lighter heart. Jesus' teachings emphasize the power of forgiveness in healing both oneself and others creating a ripple effect of positive change when, dealing with family members, it's also beneficial to lead by example by consistently maintaining your high vibration. You can become a beacon of light and positivity. This can inspire others to elevate their own energy, fostering a more harmonious family. Dynamic often seeing the peace and joy in your life can encourage others to seek similar paths. Remember that it's okay to seek professional help if needed. Therapists or spiritual counselors can provide guidance and coping strategies tailored to your specific situation. They can help you navigate complex emotional landscapes, offering tools and techniques to maintain your well-being. Ultimately, the inevitability of encountering low vibrational people, especially within the family, is a part of the human experience. These interactions challenge us to practice patience, compassion, and self-care. By implementing these strategies, you can protect your energy, promote positive change, and continue your spiritual journey with resilience and grace. It's a delicate balance to maintain your own high vibrational style, to while interacting with those who might not yet be on the same path. Embrace these encounters as opportunities for growth both for yourself and potentially for those around you. By doing so, you honor your own spiritual UAL journey and contribute to the collective elevation of consciousness.
But what if your own vibrations go low? Does that mean your spiritual journey is over? Not exactly thanks to what we'll discover now. Accept fluctuations in your vibrations. Life's challenges can sometimes cause our own vibrations to fall. This is a natural part of the spiritual journey, and it's essential to know how to recognize these moments and take steps to elevate ourselves back to a higher state. One philosopher who can shed light on this topic is the 13th-century German mystic Meister Ert. He believed in the importance of inner stillness and detachment from the material world to achieve spiritual enlightenment. Ert taught that true spiritual growth comes from within, and this inner work is crucial when we feel our vibrations are low, according to Ert's silence. And meditation can help us reconnect with our high. Gerselves and restore our vibrations. Eastern beliefs also offer valuable insights in Hinduism. The concept of pranayama or breath control is a powerful tool for managing our energy levels by practicing controlled breathing techniques. We can calm the mind, cleanse the body of negative energies, and elevate our spiritual vibrations. This practice emphasizes the importance of breath as the bridge between the physical and spiritual realms. Similarly, in African spirituality, particularly within the Yoruba tradition, there is a focus on ash, the life force that flow, s through all things. When we feel our vibrations falling, it can be helpful to engage in rituals or practices that honor and restore our ash. This might involve drumming dancing, or connecting with nature, all of which can help rejuvenate our spirit and elevate our energy surrounding yourself with uplifting music plants, crystals, or anything that raises your spirit's funu. The ancient Chinese practice of harmonizing your living space suggests that the arrangement and elements within your home can significantly impact your energy by optimizing your environment. You create E a sanctuary that supports your well-being during times of low vibrations. It is also beneficial to revisit the teachings of mystics, like Rumi. The 13th century Persian poet Rumi's poetry often speaks of the soul's journey and the importance of embracing love and light. One of his famous quotes, The wound is the place where the light enters. You reminds us that our challenges and low points can be opportunities for growth and transformation. By finding the light within our wounds, we can begin to raise our vibrations once more. Practicing gratitude is another F, active way to elevate our vibrations, the simple act of Acknowledging and appreciating the positive aspects of our lives can shift our focus from negativity to abundance. This practice aligns with the teachings of many spiritual traditions, which emphasize the power of a grateful heart in attracting more positive experiences and energies engaging in acts of kindness and service to others can also help raise our vibrations when we extend love and compassion to those around us. We not only uplift them, but also ourselves. This principle is reflected in the Buddhist practice of metta or loving-kindness meditation, which encourages us to send out good we and positive intentions to all beings by fostering a sense of connection and compassion. We can elevate our own vibrations and contribute to the collective good in psychology. The famous study by Dr. Barbara Fredrickson on positive emotions highlights the broad and build theory. According to this, Theory experiencing positive emotions broadens our awareness and encourages novel, varied, and exploratory thoughts and actions over time. This builds our physical intellectual, L and social resources applying this to our spiritual journey. We can see how cultivating positive emotions and experiences can help us build a stronger foundation for maintaining high vibrations by integrating these practices, I, and philosophies into our lives. We can navigate the inevitable fluctuations in our vibrations with grace and resilience. Whether through meditation, breathwork, acts of kindness, or simply being kind to ourselves, we can find ways to elevate our energy and continue our journey toward higher consciousness when nothing seems to work, some tea. Times despite our best efforts, we might find ourselves in a situation where nothing seems to work to raise our vibrations. This can be a particularly challenging phase of the spiritual journey.
but it is important to remember that this too is part of the process. When traditional methods of raising your vibration fail, it might be time to delve deeper into understanding the root causes and explore alternative approaches. Brace yourself for. Here is that we reach the deepest secrets of low vibrational people first and foremost for most. It's crucial to practice. Introspection during these times ancient Greek. Philosopher Socrates famously said, Know thyself. This wisdom emphasizes the importance of self-awareness and understanding our own unique paths. Sometimes low vibrations are signals from our inner selves that there is something deeper that needs attention, something beyond the usual practices of meditation, gratitude, or mindfulness. At this point, it may be helpful to seek guidance from a spiritual mentor or counselor. These people can provide insights and perspectives that we might not see ourselves and look like the shamans of indigenous cultures who guide individuals through their spiritual crisis. Spiritual mentors can help us navigate through these tough periods. They can offer personalized advice, support, and new techniques that may resonate more deeply with our current state. Exploring alternative healing modalities can also be beneficial practices such as creative expression or sound healing tap into different aspects of our energy systems and can help clear blockages that are not accessible through conventional means. For example, sound healing you says vibrational frequencies to restore harmony and balance within the body. This ancient practice used by many cultures, including Tibetan monks, can be particularly effective in shifting stubborn low vibrations. Another aspect to consider is the physical environment and the impact it has on our energy. Sometimes low vibrations persist due to external factors, such as living in a cluttered space, exposure to negative media, or being around toxic people. Nutrition and physical health also play a significant role in our vibrational state. Regular exercise A. Dequate sleep and hydration are also crucial in maintaining high. Vibrations journaling can also be a valuable tool. During these times, writing down thoughts, feelings, and experiences can provide clarity and uncover patterns or triggers that contribute to low vibrations. It can also be a means of expressing and releasing emotions that might be holding you back. This practice aligns with the psychological concept of kathis, which is the process of releasing and thereby providing relief from strong or repressed emotions. If all else fails, it might be time to embrace T. He concept of surrender this does not mean giving up, but rather letting go of the need to control the outcome, as Lao, the ancient Chinese philosopher, taught through Taoism. Sometimes the best action is inaction. By surrendering to the present moment, and trusting the flow of life, we allow ourselves to be open to unexpected solutions and insights. This act of surrender can itself be a powerful way to raise our vibrations. Moreover, it is important to remember that spiritual growth often occurs in cycles. Just as the moon waxes and wanes our spiritual journey, H. As phases of expansion and contraction, the ancient mystics understood this and taught that periods of low vibrations are not failures, but necessary phases of growth. They prepare us for higher states of being and deeper understanding. Recognizing and accepting this cyclical nature can provide solace and patience during tough times on top of that. Reconnecting with nature can be a powerful remedy. Nature has a grounding effect and can help us reset our energy spending time outdoors, whether it's walking in the forest, sitting by the ocean, or simply enjoying a park can help restore our sense of balance and elevate our vibrations. Indigenous cultures around the world have long recognized the healing power of nature and often incorporate natural elements into their spiritual practices. Lastly, always keep your sense of purpose in mind. Having a clear sense of why we are on this spiritual journey can provide motivation and resilience during low periods, reflecting on our goals and intentions, and reminding ourselves of our higher purpose can help reignite our inner light. This aligns with Viktor Frankl's teachings in H.H., his book Man's Search for Meaning, where he emphasizes the importance of finding meaning in life as a source of strength and resilience. Don't give your energy away, and finally remember to never give too much of yourself energetically, 
or you'll suffer some nasty side effects. When we overextend ourselves energetically, we are giving away our life force without ensuring we have enough left for ourselves. This can lead to feelings of exhaustion, burnout, and emotional imbalance. Just like a battery that needs to be recharged, our energy reserves must be regular. I replenished to function optimally one key aspect of managing. Our energy is learning to say no. This simple yet powerful word can help us protect our energy from being drained by tasks or commitments that do not serve our highest good. Saying no is not selfish. Rather, it is an act of self-care. Balancing our energy requires us to be. Discerning about where and how we invest it. Just as we manage our finances to ensure we have enough resources, we must manage our energy to ensure we have enough vitality to meet our needs. This means being selective about the commit. Ments we take on the relationships we nurture and the activities. We engage in rest and relaxation are vital components of maintaining our energy in our busy lives. We often overlook the importance of rest, but it is during these moments of stillness that our energy can be restored. Taking time to rest, whether through a good night's sleep, a relaxing bath, or simply sitting quietly, allows our body and mind to rejuvenate at the end of the day. Low vibrational people are unavoidable, but you don't have to lose your high vibrations because of them. You can learn to navigate eight relationships with them without losing yourself in the process by prioritizing your energetic health and practicing self-care, you can prevent burnout and maintain a vibrant, balanced energy. This will help you to show up fully in all areas of your life, bringing your best self to your relationships, work, and personal. Pursuits. Remember your energy is precious. Protect it, nurture it, and let it thrive. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.